I will never forget the nervousness and inadequacy I felt when I first substitute for Keith in this hour on July 27, 2009. The boss of the countdown team, the ever-gracious Isabella Povich, who is now the boss of me, had obviously instructed the staff to pretend they were confident that I could do it. I knew I couldn't. There was no way to occupy Keith's anchor desk without seeming smaller, much smaller, in every way that mattered and in every way that made the show the most successful hour in MSNBC history. I had never been nervous doing television before that night. Oh, I'd been agitated and out of sorts and off my game and intemperate, silly even, but never nervous. It took me a while to recognize the feeling. Then the feeling was about to overtake me when Rich Stockwell started talking me through the show and suddenly the room was filled with confidence. His, not mine, but it was enough for both of us and anyone else on the staff who needed any, but none of them did. These wonderful writers I was meeting for the first time presented me with elegant scripts. Elan Riley, who could never fit everything she knew in a script. Jonathan Larson, who dug deep and taught me things I did not know. Brendan O'Melia, who made me laugh with everything he said or wrote. Carrie Fox, Joel Mishka, and the invaluable Greg, Cor Greg Kordick, who wrote all the connective tissue of the show and made sure it could be done in 60 minutes instead of the 120 that their material deserved. The show was directed that night by Brian Nelsnick, with, the help, with help from Dave Sorosi, Ron Zeck, Megan Lisson, Aaron Ganley, Katie Ramirez, Amy Schuster, and Greg Cockrell. By the time the red light went on over my camera, I knew that I was in the hands of professionals who simply were not going to let me fail. And when you saw me reading the teleprompter that July night, I know you were disappointed not to see Keith, but, did you, but you did not turn away, or I should say click away. You kept watching, not because of me, but because the same people who delivered you Countdown every night were still delivering you Countdown, the same people minus one, the most important one, but it was still Countdown. I went on to host Countdown more times than any of us wanted me to. Keith devotedly stayed at his father's bedside for what sadly turned out to be his final days. I hosted the show every night but one in March of 2010, and it eventually fell to me to announce to you Keith's father's passing. Keith's time away from the show last year was not a restful one, and there was certainly no time to rest when he returned. Consider what Keith invented and taught us to do. Op-ed TV. The incomparable Maureen Dowd is a friend of mine. I know if I told her I want her to do five op-ed columns a week, she would tell me that is impossible and ask if I know how hard it is to do even one. I do know. I've done a few, very few. That's why I marveled, as any writer must, at what Keith was doing, five op-eds a week, each of them much, much longer than the standard 800 words. This is the only place in television where people are surprised if you leave after eight years. In the entertainment division of this company, if a show like, say, The West Wing wins every possible award and runs for seven years, everyone just applauds an extraordinary show for an extraordinary run. I saw, I saw exactly how exhausted the great Aaron Sorkin was after delivering 22 episodes a year of The West Wing. Well, Keith delivered 20 a month. 20 a month. Hundreds of episodes a year, hundreds of op-eds a year, year in and year out, for eight years. I have no idea how he did it. None of us do. No one in television history has ever done anything like it. No one knew it could be done before he did it. And in doing it, he took MSNBC to new heights. I know that I now occupy a platform built for me by Keith Overman. Had he not built this show and welcomed me to it, I would be at home tonight watching, I don't know, The Real Housewives of Somewhere. I thank you, Keith, and my 92-year-old my mother thanks you, too. 
She could never stay awake past that first commercial break in my 10 o'clock show. Good night, Mom. <laughs>